Hi, so welcome back. This is the fuse box installed. So a new consumer unit going in on our rewire with all this lot behind me. Um, I'm going to get on with stripping this out, but I just thought before we start, I'd show you exactly what we've got in the outset. And you'll see here, um, if I can get the focus right and shift them out of the way, we've got a main switch on the meter, so that's quite handy. That isolates the tails, so we can disconnect all of that quite safely without any involvement of the, the DNA or metering company. I can then strip out this um, RCD that's been covering the whole install, get rid of all of this stuff, clear some space, and we'll decide where we're going to put the new board uh, and get on with installing that. The guys are here um, doing some second fixing around the rest of the house, which will be part of the finishing off this job part of the series here, so it'll be a separate video to this. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get on with this now, I'll pop you on a time lapse and you can see all this coming out and then I'll give a little chat through what we're putting back in. Okay, that was annoying, the time lapse didn't run as it should and um, for some reason it only did about two seconds, so I'll show you that in the video. But yeah, we've got it all stripped out now, so all the boards are off and we've got a bit of space opened up. We're going to pull all these old cables out upstairs and remove them from under the floor and then we'll start to mount the, the new board. Um, I'll maybe time lapse that and we'll talk through a little bit about it as well, but I'm going to get on with it because time is pressing. Okay, so the fuse box is now on the wall. Um, time lapses haven't been working today, unfortunately, but if I hold you up, you can see the we've got the board in, so it's nice and neat, neat result. Uh, gland going through, so I'll talk through the install and the reason we've gone for that, but I want to speak about the fuse box board first. Really impressed with the grommet strip, it's cut to the right size in the box, that's a big win, and it goes in nice and stays in. Uh, unlike some of the grommet strip from other manufacturers, so that's a big plus point for it for me. The other is the RCBOs are unusually type AC and type A. I've never seen that on manufacturers literature before, so I don't know if this is just a fuse box thing or it's something I've not noticed um, on other, other manufacturers' products. But yeah, the type A and type AC, um, which is interesting. Um, obviously, we need the type A on this one and um, yeah they've gone in quite nicely the board dresses up really good um, I'll spin you around it and then I can talk through it while we look at it if I can get the old gimbal to behave so you can see here we've got the the tails coming out of the meter they're secured this is double insulated flexi tails secured on the um, the board across there and then through a plastic gland that's nice and secure into the actual um, board itself and you see here we've got the the time delayed main switch. Now you will know from my other video I like to get the time delayed S-type 100 milliamp RCDs external to the boards in plastic enclosures but because Fusebox is um, such a new product I haven't been able to source plastic enclosure and I didn't just want to put it in a non-brand one and um, have the issue of manufacturer's parts and stuff they haven't been type tested in and all that. So I popped it in the main switch. This is a perfectly acceptable install on a TT. You've got the double insulated tails coming through the the gland up there, we then go into the RCD um, 100 milliamp switch and the double insulation goes right up to the point of termination so as far as possible there's a clamp on there to hold them in place as well, a nice secure fixing on the gland and they're secured onto that board so I'm happy with that, that the tails are protected enough for a TT um, and I spoke about this with Chris Ruddock actually on Twitter, we've had a few talk chats about it and this is how he does it, um, usually I would have over here a plastic enclosure with the RCD in just so then the tails entering the board have that protection on them as well. But that's just me, this still complies with regulations, so I'm happy with that. Again, the time delayed RCD is needed because um, you don't want a, a fault to earth on any of these circuits affecting that main switch before they have a chance to operate themselves, so that holds the power on while they operate and then the fault's removed. And these are neutral and switch, sorry, line and switched neutral, so the neutral does open when they trip. So that was another must on a, on a TT install. You don't want that neutral left in if you've got a neutral to earth fault because then it will potentially upset this main switch. So we've got the SPD in there as well and that was one of the intentions of having this um, before the wiring leading up to that because they are just single insulated in this board. So I wanted the main switch there to cover those in the event they come into contact with some earthy bits and can operate the RCD um, rather than energize the case itself with the overcurrent protection not working. So yeah, some people don't actually understand the purpose of the S-Type. It is really just there to look after the tails into the board. It's 100 milliamp, it's time delayed, so it doesn't immediately operate. Um, because like I say, if you get an air fault on a final circuit, you want that protective device to have a chance to 
to trip before it operates itself. But yeah, it's, it's come up quite nice. Um, very solid board. I like this. This is a good cover on the buzz bar. Really nice. The buzz bar is nice and thick as well. Let me show you that under there. Um, plenty of wiring room, really roomy boards. And um, a few people have recommended these actually across social media. So I've seen these here and there for quite some time. It's not a new product, obviously. Other people have popped videos installing these all over the internet. And um, I thought I'd give them a go for um, for what they cost. I mean, these are like 10 to 12 pounds for the RCBOs, I think, which is really good value. And again, I think it was 45 pound for the time delayed RCD. Um, you know, you can't knock it for the money it costs. The box itself is nice and strong and solid. No complaints with that. The um, breakers all line up nicely. They're not deflecting as you sometimes get, so they don't fit nicely with the front cover on. The labels you get with the board are decent as well. I'm gonna obviously print my own out because we always do, but the ones that come with this are fairly good, wherever I've put them, can't remember now. Um, yeah, so it's decent, decent. Um, again, it's unfair to compare the quality of it with something like Electrium and the actual cases. I spoke about the benefits of the Electrium boards before with the knockouts on them, they're really thick and solid. Obviously there is a difference in price on these things and you are gonna pay a bit more for that extra material in the product. Um, that's just the nature of economies, I guess, but there's nothing at all I can find with this that I can knock it for, to be totally honest. Um, there's plenty of room in it, plenty of fixing points, loads of cable point entries, the screws on the the um, RCBOs and main switches are solid. Um, you've got to obviously torque them down. It's 2.5 newton meters and 1.2 newton meters, depending on what cable types are going into the RCBOs, and then 2.5 newton meters on your neutral and earth bars. And again, the screws on those they don't strip the heads when you tighten them up. They yield quite nicely. So yeah, I've got no complaints with it. It's decent board. Uh, we've just got to get the earth rod in now. Obviously, none of this is energized. We've got the as we've said. The main switch here that we've been able to isolate the tails from so that's uh that's all good um we're just getting the air rod in now that's what you might be able to hear matthew drilling he's uh busy doing that and if you look it might not be out as yet we'll actually show as i can see we'll actually show you the installation of the air rod on the uh, episode to do with the job moving along so this video is just focused on the consumer unit going in a little chat around it and what i think of it um the reason we've selected the devices we have but the wider video showing the earth rod install is going to be on a different episode that'll probably follow this one, I think. So wait to check out that one. You can see what we come up with there on the earth rod and um, we'll show you the, the earth reading in there as well. Let's make sure you through the circuits actually while I'm remembering. So we've got a, a cooker circuit, which is a six mil twin and earth. We've then got a kitchen ring. So that's 2.5 mils. Um, we've got a 20 amp circuit going over to an oven, a 20 amp circuit going over to the workshop, We've got a 20 amp circuit there waiting to go in for the oil boiler that's just tucked in the back but obviously the boiler's not in yet so I've not wired that up. Uh, we have got a socket circuit to upstairs, a socket circuit for the lounges and then two lighting circuits up and down. So yes, straightforward install. Uh, don't forget the bonding. <laughs> so that's the other thing Matthew's working on now over there. Um, but yeah, we're about second fixed on this one now. I've just got to zip off and get a pendant because we've under ordered one. You can get that on, that's this one above my head. Uh, we can then go through the process of getting some dead tests and live tests. As you'll all know from watching my other videos, I always dress the boards up first. I know some people do the dead test while they're wiring them. I always like to get everything in and then I can run through the process of carrying out that maintenance and testing on the board. And if there's any snags on it, you know, before the next person comes to inspect this in five years or whenever, I can get it in chip shape order ready for them. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and talking through the consumer unit install. As I said, I'll try and drop into this one the use of the uh, DeWalt wall chaser if I can. Um, we have got a little bit of a chase to do, so I'll try and get the guys to film that. But it's a proper beastie thing. Um, if you aren't familiar with it, it's earlier on in this video, a little chat about the actual product itself. But we'll try and get some footage of it in use. Otherwise, thank you all very much for watching. If you have any questions about the install, drop them in the comments. I love for people to get involved. Um, if you want to uh, slate us for anything we've done please feel free it's an opportunity for us to learn and improve at the end of the day and um, yeah let's uh, let's see how this all goes oh before we go I'm doing a challenge through the course of August running 5,691 meters every day and that's because the recorded suicide figures in the UK in 2019 was 5,691 and it's just to try and raise awareness through my own social media of the issues around mental health and suicide in, in the whole of society, but in particular in construction, I think it's a big problem still and, and there's not enough discussion 
around it still. It's still a taboo subject and people should feel comfortable coming forward and getting that support that they need. There's loads of places out there where you can go and get that now. Um, so it's important to, to raise some awareness and engage in discussion with people um, through social media, I think. So I'm going to try and do that myself. I also need to get fit badly. Um, I've been very good at eating burgers and drinking beer and I need to kind of start running that off. I got pretty good at running two or three years ago. I lost a lot of weight and got really fit. So I want to try and get back with that. It's basically 5k a day, isn't it? So it's um, it's a bit of a task for a fat, out of shape man. But I'm sure by the end of it, um, I'll be flying through them. That's certainly the intention. And also the Samaritans are doing a walk your dog 50 miles in August. Again, to raise awareness of mental health and suicide. So if you're uh, not able to go out running or be involved in anything like that, but you want to you want to join in in some way, getting the dog out for a wander is a good way. I'm going to take Cooper, my dog, on some of these runs. Given the option, he would play 50 miles on August the 1st. Um, you know, he can run and run forever. But yeah, I'll maybe drag him out. I'll try and get some of it covered in videos, but I'm mindful not to throw this in everyone's faces every single day, so I'll just keep popping it into a video here and there. But otherwise, thank you all very much for, for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you can. It makes a huge difference. I'm trying my best to get the content presented in as good a way as I possibly can. And uh, yeah, I hope you're enjoying it. And uh, catch you on the next one. Okay, so we've got the earth pit dug in and the rod driven down. We're going to see what value of ZE we can get inside. We've got a couple of cables going through and I'll explain why. Um, we've got a cable going through back to the consumer unit. And that's a 16mm um, single. We've also got a 10mm single that goes through and that's just to temporarily connect to the water bond. Now the actual water stop tap is moving over to the kitchen and we've got a bond over there waiting for that but obviously we need to bond it in the short term so it's coming straight off the rod um, just for now so we've got that connected down to the same potential. There's not actually anything connected to it in terms of pipe work, but obviously it's it's inside the property, so we've got to get that bond on there. We've done that just for now. Um, pit's cutting. If you look at the bottom there, we've got a spider come and make a home already down there, so he's already thinking this is quite a crusty little place for me to live. Um, that's not staying like that, obviously, with the cable going through the wall, as I explained in the video before, or it might be in the video to do with the job rather than the consumer unit, but this render's all coming off. So there's no point doing anything too fancy with that for the moment. It's just functional for now. So once the render's taken off and they're going to be digging out the other side of this wall as well to insulate it, we can put a proper route in to the earth rod. This was the rod we did have originally to work with. Obviously that's seen better days. Um, we were getting a value on that of nearly a thousand ohms. So it's obviously not doing a great deal anymore. It could well be to do with the termination rather than the rod itself. But we've gone for a nice copper one and put it in a proper pit just to make a decent job of it. Like I say, we was being careful of the, the water pipe within the ground. So we've had to put the pit there because that's um, somewhere we were comfortable to know that there wasn't going to be any water pipe work. And yeah, that's kind of where we're at with that one. I'll um, show you inside, taking some measurements of ZE and what we've managed to achieve off that rod. Right, so we're going to get a measurement of ZE now. You've seen the electrode outside. We're clamped onto the um, main earth going off to that. There's no bonding currently in place. If I attach my probe, you'll see there we're measuring 249 volts. If I can hold it on at the same time and hit test, you see it runs into the test process. And we've got 24.2 ohms. We've repeated this a few times now and it's very consistent, so I'm happy with that. That's actually a good value onto the electrode and obviously we can let it settle as well. We're here another day so we can take some more measurements, make sure it's consistent. It is quite a wet day outside, so that's going to affect it. Um, but yeah, we're well under the 100 ohms there. That's pretty decent just for a single rod. And obviously we've got the cable going over to it as well. So we can get on with the rest of the testing now, see if we can get some of this energised and you'll see in the video to do with the job as a whole, how it's all come together at the end. 